Hey everybody, it's Megan Ritz with Classic Cakes. Today is Tutorial Tuesday and we are going to do some buttercream horizontal stripes and stenciling. I'm going to pull up the live on here so I can see comments. As you're joining, um, let me know where you're from, what you're doing. Oh, look, it popped right up. It's learning. Look at my volume. Awesome, now I can see your comments. Thank you guys for joining us today, Tutorial Tuesday with Classic Cakes. Um, we're gonna do some very cool different designs with stencils and um, this very cool comb by Esther Cakes. I love this company. Um, they make some very cool tools for cakes and this is one of my favorites. Um, it is a comb that has teeth and what you can do is you can actually comb the side of your cake, the buttercream. And I'll leave these this pattern in your cake. And then if you stick it in the freezer, you can let that buttercream get nice and hard and then you can fill it with different colors, stripes, um, and then smooth it down. And then you'll have this perfect, beautiful um, horizontal stripe pattern. So we're gonna do that today. And then we're gonna play with some stenciling, which is something that I love to do. So both of these techniques use the freezer. Um, and that is something that um, we have, this freezer is actually right behind me here. Um, it's very small. We have two walk-in coolers to store our cakes um, while we're working on them through the week and we bake everything the week of. So we don't freeze our cake. Um, it dries out your cake. So there's really no reason to use a freezer to store, but we will use it for decorating. So if we're wanting a cake to get cold so that we can stack it, if we're wanting to do some of these designs, then we use that freezer. Um, so when there's lots of weddings, um, like a normal May, then we have that freezer full of tiers of cakes. They only need to sit in there for about 15 minutes till the icing just gets cold enough to where you can touch it without indenting it. Um, and then we stack our cakes that way. So it makes it really easy to stack the cake that way. Um, but I wanna show you guys some of these cool techniques. So there's lots of different kinds of stencils. Um, before I get into that, I just wanna say thank you to everybody. Mother's Day was insane. Um, last week, the entire week was crazy. We had 80 or more emails a day from people wanting cakes um, or having questions about weddings. Um, it was absolutely insane. And this week does not seem to be slowing down now that graduation is around the corner. So if you are interested in a cake for May or even June, all you have to do to book your date is let us know the date that you want the cake. That's it. So if you let us know what date you want the cake, we'll reserve the spot for you. And that way we don't book up without your order. We are running about one to two weeks out right now. We're about to book up for next week. So if you need anything anytime soon, definitely let us know. You can just email us cake at classiccakescarmel.com and we'll get you taken care of. So graduation cakes are coming up. This um, is one of my favorite ways to decorate a graduation cake with this horizontal stripes. You can do it in school colors. It's super fun. Um, so let's see what we got here. Um, tools. So I showed you guys the Esther Cakes um, comb that we will use. The other thing that's really cool about these is they're very firm. They're made very nice material, so they don't bend. They stay nice and straight. Um, somebody must want a cake. And uh, so no matter how you ice your cake, like if it's not perfect, this will make it perfect. So I love these tools. We also have um, little bowl scrapers that we use to smooth the side of a cake. So you have this straight side. These are flexible, which makes it nice if you want to make corrections, um, but it does require a little bit more practice. Um, and then we use just, this is a pharmacy discount card. You can use an old credit card, a driver's license, anything like that. Just make sure to put it through the dishwasher so it's sanitary. And then this nice smooth side you can use to smooth cakes to make corrections. We will use this for our stencils and we'll show you how to do that. Scissors, we're always using scissors for stuff. I've got some parchment bags here. Um, gloves, a mouse to my computer, that's not for this. Um, I love these little angled pointed spatulas. They work really good for really intentional work. So especially with the stencil, if you're wanting to get um, the icing really into the stencil, this is great to use. So there's a lot of different kinds of stencils we're gonna talk about briefly here and then we'll get into the fun part. We're gonna ice a cake and then I'm gonna show you guys how to use these combs and stencils. 
So one of the kinds of stencils is relatively new. It has this like mesh material um, in the trans, you can see the transparent part is actually a mesh. So this is meant for a royal icing. Um, it's a very delicate, um, if you want a very delicate look to your stencil, this is an excellent um, type of stencil to get. The cool thing about this um, is it will lay perfectly on your cake and it doesn't have the little pieces that pull up. So like this guy is another stencil I love. It's like floral, but it has little bits that break off because we use them a lot. Um, and so when you get a stencil like this, you don't have to worry about that happening. So these guys are meant to wrap around the side of a cake. You want, depending on the type of stencil, you may want a different size. So there's different, here's like a, a tile type pattern, here's a floral type pattern. This is my favorite one right now. I'm totally obsessed over this like foliage leaf pattern. But you can see the shape of these are all very different. Um, so these, this shape stencil is really nice because it gives you a lot of surface area around the side of the cake. So you don't have to do it as many times to get around the side of the cake, right? I could do this once or twice and get around most cakes. Whereas something like this, if this is the only surface area that hits the side of the cake, I have to do this like six times around the side of the cake. It's a lot more time, there's a lot more seams. Um, and so that makes it a little bit more challenging. What I'll probably do just for fun is show you a few different ones. So we'll do like some patches of stencils um, just to show you how that looks. So I like these guys, I just thought they'd be fun. And then this one, like I said, is for royal icing. So we won't do this today, um, but I just wanted to share with you guys that there's a whole nother type of stencil out there. Now you can hold this against your cake and you can spray it with pearl or paint it, or you can, what we're gonna do today is we're going to smear it with icing and then pull it off and then we'll have that second coat of icing in a different color, in the same color. It doesn't matter, it looks awesome either way. Um, I have some fun colors for us. So let's get started with icing a cake. I'm gonna set these guys over here. And we will, hey everybody. Dibby, the comb is so pricey. Is that the Esther Cakes comb? Because honestly, I bought it so long ago, I don't remember um, what their pricing is. But I will tell you that it is significantly nicer than the other combs that we have used. So if you get one that you know you're gonna use a lot, just charge a little bit more for that design when you're doing it and they will pay for it. Okay, so I'm gonna move you guys around so we can see the cake. Got these styrofoams here for height on my cake. Here we go. All right, so first things first, we're gonna ice this guy. Let me get all these things out of the way. Terry Towner asks, where can you buy these stencils? Um, as for cakes, you can buy online. Um, the other ones, I will have to find out where we specifically got each of these because they've come from all different places. Um, but if you look at cake um, supply stores, you'll find them there. And um, I believe Miss B's has several options as well. So I've got an almond cake with chocolate truffle filling here because delicious. And let's ice this guy white, and then we'll do a colorful stencil on it. So we're just going to pop some icing on top. I like to start with more than I need on top because I like it to hang over the sides. And then that next round of icing will stick nicely to that. Icing sticks better to icing than it sticks to cake. And I have already simple syruped these cakes. Do you guys remember what simple syruping is? I love it. I'm gonna have to quiz you guys today. That'll be fun for me. Hi from the south side. Cheryl, thank you, that's so nice. All right, so I've got a little chunk of butter in here. Sometimes if the butter is too cold, it doesn't mix in as well. That's fine. 
little problems from using real butter. Alright, so you guys can't see what I'm doing. Let me turn you guys around real quick. Hello. Alright, I ice on this side of the cake because I'm right handed, so this will make this easier. Judy, hey, thank you for jumping on. That's so cool. All right, there you go. So we are just smearing the icing on the cake. We're going to ice this guy real quick. I'm going to do this one white, and then we're going to do another one iced in a color. And then I, I have like a tealy blue and like a almost emerald green and a lime green. I don't know what color I want to do on this cake. Terry is furiously taking notes. She's ready for her quiz. Okay. What is simple syrup, Terry? I love it. Ashley, any quiz questions, answers now? Right? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to do a really rough here with this spatula. And then I'm going to grab my little, this guy here. And we're going to do, let me go over here so you can see. We're going to do the bottom. Dawn, equal parts, sugar and water. Love it. Yes. Terry, sugar and water. Marsha, I know. She knows. I love it. You guys. Simple syrup um, is equal parts sugar and water. Um, you just heat it up until that sugar dissolves. And then you can brush that on your cake, and it just adds to that moisture. Keeps the outside from drying out. Keeps it from getting crusty. Makes your cake extra delicious. You can flavor it. You can use lemon or almond or whatever you want for it. Okay, um, next quiz question. What is in our buttercream? There are four ingredients in our buttercream. I already told you guys one of them today. Okay, so we have just a really rough ice cake here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this comb first. So we're going to do this guy with a comb. Do I want to do that? I don't know. Sure. So I'm going to do the bigger side. I just, I personally think that looks cooler. So I'm going to just going to do this comb and I'm going to flip you guys around again. I'm just going to keep moving you around all night. Don't mind me. That way you can get the best view. Okay. So. The comb just goes straight into the buttercream. And if you rest it on the board, then you keep it even. So you don't have to worry about it being like wavy lines up and on the cake. If I rest it on the board, then it will be perfectly even. So I'm just gonna go around until it looks beautiful and perfect. And as you get more comfortable spinning your turntable, your cake while you're doing stuff, you will um, get smoother lines, fewer seams. You can see I'm taking off quite a bit of buttercream on here to do this. Oh, let's see, we've got lots of answers to this question. Terry says A plus everyone, we've got the simple syrup, let's see if we can do the buttercream. Dawn, do we use flavors? I'm assuming that means in our simple syrup, we do not. Um, we just do straight um, half sugar, half water. Um, the reason is because our cakes are all a little bit different. And so we just want a neutral simple syrup for those guys. If you do like, you can even use liquor 
um, liqueur to do that as well. All right, cool. So I've got nice, clean combs. I've got a couple spots, but I'm just going to say that's fine. And you see my seam here? When you pull the comb off, you just want to pull it off as gradually as possible to like hide that seam so it's subtle instead of being really sharp because you're always going to have a little bit of that. All right, now I'm going to take this guy again and I'm just going to smooth my top because we messed it all up. And I'm not worried about it being perfect. Once it's cold, we can always make little micro adjustments if we need to or smooth something down. We just don't want to have like huge bumps because once we stick this in the freezer, it's going to be hard and it'll be easier to fix big mistakes now, but also easier to fix small mistakes later. So you want it to be even, but it doesn't matter if there's like little imperfections. Cool. Let's see what we got for our buttercream here. Simple syrup does not need to go on the cake hot. We put it on the cake right out of the oven immediately, but we'll also sometimes do a second coat, especially in the winter when it's just drier, um, to make sure that that cake has an extra layer of moisture. Marsha, high ratio powdered sugar, salt, butter, icing sugar. I love it, you guys. Yes, this comb is amazing. I love it. So you could do, there are a lot of combs where you just do the comb and then that's the design. But this one we're going to take to another level. So I'm going to pop this guy in the freezer while we ice the next one and get ready for what we're going to do with the stencil for that one. Okay, so that was our almond with our chocolate truffle filling. And here we have a raspberry. We're a little crooked up here. It's okay, we'll just stick it right back. Um... Okay, so here are my colors. You guys can help me decide what colors to do. I have this cool, like, tealy color. I have this almost emerald. Not quite emerald, like, dark enough, but it's got the right tones. Then I've got this limey green. So one of these, I might do all three, actually, with the white. But then this guy is going to get iced in one color. Maybe... I'm going to ice it in the emeraldy green. Let's see what happens. It's fun. There's no wrong answer. It's just cake. We're just going to play. All right. So, same thing we were doing before. We're just going to ice it. Hopefully I have enough icing. I don't know if I made enough. We're going to call this a very close, close fit. So, we are going to just smear it on the top just like we did before. I like it to hang over the edge. We're not worried about it being perfect. Let's see. All right, what is in our buttercream? The answer, our four ingredients in our buttercream is high ratio shortening, which makes it very smooth. It also doesn't give you that like Crisco-y coating in your mouth. Um, real butter. We use salted butter that helps cut some of the sweetness. And then powdered sugar and vanilla. That is it. So we use an American buttercream here. You can see it's very forgiving. It makes me look like I'm good at what I do. Um, it does not crust. If you're using a crusting buttercream, then you're gonna have a much harder time for any of these designs that we're doing today. So what makes a buttercream crust? Ooh, good question, you guys. I got a good question for you. What makes a buttercream crust? What ingredient in there makes it crust? Hint, we do not have it in our buttercream. All right, cool, I might just have enough. Sometimes it works beautifully. I like this color. Throw me some hearts if you like this color. We're gonna do some funky colors today. I'm feeling funky. 
Did anyone see the spot that we got on CBS4 this past week? Last Wednesday? Oh my gosh. They interviewed us and it was so much fun. It was so cool. They were so amazing. Did an interview for CBS over Zoom. So it was awkward and unusual and I'm new to interviews anyway. But they made us look so good. They made me feel good. They spent four and a half minutes talking about how amazing we are. It felt so nice. All right, so I've got enough. Awesome, powdered sugar, liquid water. Okay, Marjorie, totally spot on. Sorry if someone else said it also. Liquid, any kind of liquid that you add to your buttercream makes it crusting. So if you add a ton of flavoring, if you add milk, if you add water, if you add any kind of liquid, it's going to um, make it crusting and that can be totally fine but for designs like this it will start to crust and therefore it's not very forgiving so it just depends what you're using it for all right so we've got our beautiful green I love this color I love like emeraldy greens and this is just a little bit brighter all right so we are just icing our sides smooth guys I'm not worried about it being perfect we're just having fun tonight um, you want your sides to be straight so that the stencils fit properly because as they wrap around them the longer your stencil is the more the shape of your cake matters so you want to make sure they're even um, but they don't have to be perfect nobody's judging you especially if you're decorating at home guys just have fun don't worry about it being perfect every cake you do will get better Every time you push yourself to learn something new, you learn something new. Alright, so we got our top here, and I'm going to pop this guy in the freezer. So both of these cakes need to be hard before we do the next step. So before we add our stripes, before we add our stencil. Otherwise, um, the stencil will stick to this. So we're going to literally lay the stencil on top of this. And because it will be cold, it won't stick to it. And we can put some other buttercream on it and then pull it off and it'll be gorgeous. I've got my sanitary rag here. All right, wipe off this. And while my cake is warm or room temperature, while my buttercream is soft, I'm gonna clean off my board. Once it's cold, it smears more than coming off because of the grease, the butter in it. This just makes it easy to clean off. There's a lot of little things like cleaning up your board that will make your cakes look more professional. Those little details. People might not be able to put like a word, like they might not be able to tell you that's what it is. You may not notice it like consciously, but all those little details add up to make your cake look less busy, look more professional. All right, so let's take this guy and pop it in the oven, or in the oven. <laughs> let's take this guy and pop it in the freezer, and then um, I'm gonna check the other one, and I'll show you guys how to tell if it's ready or not. It is definitely not ready. So we have, um, a cake that we want to be um, hard so when you touch it like think frozen butter you want it to be hard if there's any give or stickiness to it then it's not ready um, so we've got like a few minutes so we've got to wait for this so what I'm gonna do is um, I'm just gonna show you guys on a board I'm gonna grab a cake board real quick and show you some of these stencils and what they look like so I will be back in just one second Did you guys miss me? Did you think I was coming back? Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how to use the stencils and then we will go ahead and put them on the cake. So I love these guys. Let's see. Let's see, I've got questions here. Donna. Um, I cannot share our buttercream recipe, but if you go on Pinterest or online and look for a um, American buttercream, 
you'll find very similar, if not the same, buttercream recipe. It's a pretty standard recipe. Um, and you can always just play with your proportions um, until you get the consistency that you want. Because our buttercream is very stiff, it's very smooth, but that might not be the kind of buttercream that you want to use or like using. So you can add more butter to make it softer, add more powdered sugar to make it stiffer. It's just a personal preference of what you are comfortable working with. Um, Jenny, Jenny says, oh, I lost it. Sorry, guys, let me find these comments. Oh, my gosh, you guys, there are so many comments. Okay. Um, Elizabeth, do you ever do in-person classes or lessons? Yes, um, so in January and February, um, we will be doing in-class lessons, assuming we can. Um, we've done them last couple years, and they've been amazing, so much fun. It's the only time that the shop is really calm enough for us to invite other people in, um, so we reserve that time for those classes. Super fun group classes, um, a very cool way to learn. They're super fun. We have like six to 12 people here, depending on the class. Um, and learn a specific skill. So it might be um, icing a cake and piping. It might be how to make a gum paste flour, anything like that. Um, let's see. Never give, give up on learning, Marsha. I love that. Um, Karen, <laughs> okay, she said the icing looks so easy to work with or are you making it look easy? So. A little bit of both. The icing is very easy to work with. It's also the icing I've worked with for the last 10 years. So like me and this icing are buddies, right? If I use a new icing, it's always a little bit bumpy at first. Um, but I have been decorating for 10 years. So icing a cake is something that I can do in two minutes and make it look relatively nice. Um, so practice. The more cakes you do, the um, more comfortable you'll be with it. Okay, you all, I love you guys. Thank you so much. All the nice comments and kind words. Um, okay, so let's play with this teal real quick. And I'm just gonna show you guys a couple of stencils. Let me see if I can adjust this guy so I can show you while I'm doing it. Look at that. Technology is so amazing. Okay, so um, I'm gonna show you guys what these look like. You can see they're kind of stuck together. So you have to be careful with these little guys. All these little um, little pieces and turns and things like that, they can get torn or they can bend. And when that happens, then they stick into the cake or they stick out away from the cake and you don't get the nice pretty stencil. So you gotta be careful with these. Um, they should, um, when you wash them, really, really hot water and really gentle washing and then sanitizer and then we always just clip them like this and hang them and let them air dry um, okay so let's do this guy and if this was my cake it would be frozen so it'd be hard I would just take this guy and I would lay it exactly where I want it and I want to hold it so that it doesn't move you don't want it like squiggling around you want it to stay exactly where you put it take just a little bit of buttercream and I'm going to smear it all over my stencil. I like this color. So when I do a stencil, there are definitely different opinions on how to do stencils. Um, when I do a stencil, I want it nice and thin. I don't want it to be chunky. So I'm going to scrape this until it's like down to just this. And then it's on my cake. All I'm going to do is pull it straight off. Look at how gorgeous that is. Look at that. That's so gorgeous. So this could go around the side of your cake. So let's talk about troubleshooting. So I have these smudges here. Oh, that's a big no-no. We don't like that. So what I'm going to do with this guy. I've got my handy dandy card and I'm just going to clean it off the rest of the way. Clean off my table. 
You have to be very clean when you're working with stencil because that little bit of icing smudges and ruins my whole stencil. So I'm going to take my finger and clean off the back of the stencil where any of those smudges happened. And we just want to make sure that my stencil is perfect and clean and beautiful because you don't want to take the time to go through all of this and then have a silly smudge. Okay, so the front can be dirty, but the back that touches the cake needs to be super clean. So we will set this guy down. So when you have smudges like this, you can take your pointy. I call these pointy. They're my best friend here. You can take your pointy and you can clean it up a little bit, right? It's actually easier to do it on the cake than it is on this board because the cake gives a little bit. Okay, so when your cake is said and done, that is perfectly acceptable. That's not gonna be noticeable, that smudge. Whereas this smudge, that's a mess. That's not good. So, let's see if we can clean that side up too. So normally what you would do is you would just scrape this whole thing off and do a different one. We would just do another one to make it perfect. or as close to perfect as we can. Perfect doesn't really exist. This is art, this is cake. But we can get pretty darn close. Okay, so the rule of thumb is, at least my rule of thumb, which I'm gonna totally tell you guys, if I stand back and look at this cake, am I gonna notice that? If the answer is yes, then I have to scrape it off and redo it. If the answer is no, and I only see it because I'm right up on it, then that's fine. So there's kind of a range of what's acceptable because perfection doesn't really exist, but we wanna make sure that we're doing our best to make the work and the quality of work, the standard, very high. So I love this guy. Let's do this one. I like this floral one too. So the more tiny bits, the more difficult the stencil. So a stencil like this, I would consider very simple, very easy. It's very solid. This guy is gonna be a little bit more difficult. So we just wanna make sure it's clean. I've got little guys poking up here. Let's see if you can see how they stand up off the stencil. So I can try to bend those back, but most likely I'm gonna have an imperfection from that stencil. So let's put this guy here and let's do a limey green. I love it. All right, so again, we don't want it to move. That's what caused my smudges. So let's see if we can do that without moving the stencil. Again, it is, see how it lifted? That's gonna be a problem. This is easier to do on cake because it kind of sticks to the icing whereas it's not sticking to this board but you guys will get the point. So we're really just smearing it back and forth. Now I can take my card. I shouldn't have done green, it's gonna look like little cabbages now. All right, so we do like do we like the teal one or the limey green one better? So you can see we have a couple of spots here where this is like too thin. We want too thin there. Um, we've got a little smudge here. But guys, is anyone gonna notice that on your cake? So I think it's easy to be really hard on yourself, especially when you're a new decorator. There are a lot of things that you're gonna see as the decorator who's like zoomed in and focusing that the people enjoying your cake are not gonna notice. Okay, so we clean the front. Now we're gonna clean the back of this. And we're just making sure there's no icing on the back. All 
right, beautiful. So we've got a clean stencil here. I'm going to put you over here. I'm going to put you over here. And then let's do this other one. I love this one. All right, we've got some boats for the teal here. Teal or lime, which one do you like better? Let's do a little, we can do a little strip of the emeraldy green. And then we'll check our cakes again. Teal, 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 both, teal. Teal's getting lots of votes. All right, so we can just put this right here. Yeah, I like this side better. Let's see what you look like. This is my favorite stencil right now. I don't really know why. I think it's just, it's like floral, but not like flowery. Very different. Do you hear that? It's a very different kind of stencil. All right, so now we're going to pull this straight off. Oh, beautiful. I love it. Very cool. So we've got a little smudging right in the middle of both of those. Hmm. Is that the stencil or is that me? Okay, this one's the stencil. It's just very tight. This one I smudged right here. So they look actually kind of the same. So what do we like? The emerald, the lime, or the teal? I like them all. Okay, so again, we're going to want to clean this guy up. So we clean that side. We just want to make sure that there's no buttercream on the side that's going to touch the cake. Otherwise, you're just going to put a smear right on your cake. Okay, so I have these set over here so they're out of my way and staying clean. Let's check that cake. Actually, before we check the cake, we can finish prepping. So we are going to make, because the first thing we're going to do are those stripes. So we are going to clean all of our things off with my lovely apron right here. So handy having a nice little towel on me. All right, so I'm gonna put some of these bat colors in bags. These are parchment bags. I love these, they're disposable. I don't have to spend time washing tips. So we're gonna put just a little bit of each of these guys in here to fill a bag. You just wanna fill the middle and leave the top empty so that you have room to fold it over. Kimberly likes that last one. Me too. That's one of my favorites. Alright, so let's get these guys out of the way. Emerald. Excited to see how these turn out. I haven't done these colors exactly yet, so really fun to do something different. All right. Teal, let's check those cakes out and see if we're ready. Ashley, that cake is beautiful. Okay. I got my bags of color. Pointies. Get this here. Let's get you guys ready. In position and ready for some cakes. Okay, it's a tiny 
tiny bit softer than I'd like it to be, but we should be good. So it's firm, but it's still a little, just a little sticky. So we're just gonna work really fast. Cause what you want, especially if you're doing this for the first time is you want it to be really cold. Um, that buys you a lot more time. The colder it is, the more time you have to play with it. So we're just gonna work a little fast. I'm gonna take my bags of parchment, just cut the tip straight off. And we're just gonna work on filling some of these with color. I'm just gonna start with this one. All I'm doing is making a messy fill of this stripe. And I'm gonna do, what pattern do I wanna do? I don't wanna do an even pattern, I wanna do an asymmetrical pattern. So we're just squeezing that ball. See what this turns into. I love this comb and you can fill like half of these with white so they just disappear and you don't even have the stripes and you can just do like three stripes running around the middle you can do only one color of stripes you can ice the cake in black and do stripes or any color and do any other color stripes you can paint them it's really awesome the, the possibilities are really endless and this is the Esther cake stencil home not stencil sorry okay so I have my stripes in here filled now we're gonna go ahead and smooth it you can use a small card you can use a big card it doesn't matter um, I lost my big card here it is I need to clean it off so we're just going to clean this guy off you want it to be clean Anytime you touch your cake with it, clean and sanitary. Okay, so now all we're gonna do is we're gonna smear. So the first few passes, it's not gonna look good yet. You're gonna kind of smear it around and that'll help fill those holes evenly, fill those stripe holes. And then it's gonna start turning out really pretty. This is why it's important for it to be cold Otherwise, they're just gonna like smear together and be messy. You want them to be crisp, clean lines. And you're just gonna keep going around until that happens. Scraping it off on the table so that I have a nice clean spatula or a scraper every time. You guys see how fast that is? First time I did this, my mind was blown. I thought it was just the coolest thing ever to be able to put perfectly smooth, perfect little stripes on a cake. All right guys, what do you think? I love it, throw me some hearts. Um, you can turn this into a rainbow. I love doing some like uneven stripes like this. This guy has a rounded corner here. So because of that, it doesn't get in the bottom super tight. You can see how it kind of bevels. I'm just gonna take this guy and make that sharp. and clean. All right, so now we got to clean up our top. I've got some green smeared up here, so we can just trim that right off. Super easy. This is great for like graduation cakes too, because you can do like stripes in the school colors. <laughs> 
mess here from scraping all these. I saw how fast that was too. So letting it sit in the freezer and then you have this nice perfect clean cake. Let's just clean up this edge again. I hope my stenciling goes as well as this does. I feel like stenciling sometimes gives me a hard time. It's like a super easy technique, but I just, I'm an impatient person. And so if I don't let my cake get like super cold, like you want it to be like hard cold, then the stencil like gets a little sticky and smudgy and just becomes difficult. So we're gonna be super patient by spending a moment and cleaning up this top edge here. So, I've got a few spots here that I want to fix up. This is the, um, I guess the dangerous side of cake decorating is you could never be done fiddling. Sometimes you just have to say like, it's good enough, I'm gonna walk away, it's done. You don't want to mess up your cake. But we're going to make this top edge nice and clean and smooth. See these cakes a lot with the stripes on them and then like a drip on them over the stripes. It's really pretty. I like that juxtaposition. All right. So we've got our nice clean top here. All right guys, tell me, do you feel comfortable? You wanna give this a try? Who feels like they can totally rock these super easy comb stripes? Um, check out Esther Cakes too. They have lots of different kinds of combs, not just these. They have different kinds of stripe combs so you can fill them in different ways, different sizes. Um, even this comb that we used here, this is the bigger of the two sizes on this comb. So there's a smaller one um, that you can use as well if you want tighter, smaller um, stripes. Bob Ross, happy accidents. I love it, Michael. Oh, do I ever have any Bob Ross happy accidents? I love that question all the time. Um, we have been playing around with different kinds of waking flowers lately um, and different ways to fill the bag with the buttercream flowers. All kinds of happy accidents. It's beautiful. All right, so let's check out that other cake and see if we're ready for some stenciling. Almost there. Super close. Um, okay, so let's clear out our space and get ready for that so we can bust that one out and I will check out some comments. It looks like I've missed quite a few. Give that cake a moment to get perfect. Get all of this stuff out of the way. I'm going to use my pointy spatula. I'm going to use not this big guy. With this stencil, I like to be like very precise with the tools I'm using, so I like these little cards. All right. That is in the way. Which one? Wait, I sit in the emerald, so do we want to do the lime or the teal stencil on it? What do you guys think? Love it. You guys love it. Thank you so much. Terry, yeah, the, the stripes, it's so fast. Um, especially if your cake is nice and cold before you get those stripes on there, you just start spinning it around and it's super easy. Um, the long part is that you have to like ice your cake and then you have to put it in the freezer and wait for it and then you have to pull it back out. So it's a lot of like touching the cake as far as production line, um, but time spent touching the cake is pretty minimal. 
um, assuming it agrees with you. Um, Elizabeth asks, how long do we normally have to sit in the freezer before decorating? Um, generally, I'd say 15 minutes. It depends how cold the freezer is, how many times the door is getting open. So like if we have a really busy day and we're all in there opening the door, closing the door a bunch, um, you can see our freezer right here. Um, then it's going to warm it up a little bit more. Um, when I say warm it up, I mean like it'll get to 32 instead of being at one degree. So it's still perfectly safe within the um, temperature zone, but it's definitely a big difference between how fast it takes to freeze the cake. Teal, teal, teal. All right, so we want to do the teal. All right, so we are going to do the teal. And let's do, let's do that like florally stencil. I'll let you guys choose. We're going to do the teal color. And do we want to do the tile, the flowers, or the greenery, the leaves? Leaves, flowers, or tiles. We're going to do the teal on an emerald cake. I'll let you guys decide which one you would like to do. Let me grab that cake. Hopefully we're ready. All right, so when I touch it, it's cold and it's firm. So we just gotta work fast and we're gonna have a really nice stencil here. All right, which one are we doing? Tile, tile, tile. All right, the tile wins. I love it. So we're gonna do the teal tile. So the first thing we have to decide is do we want it to go this way or do we want it to go this way? With this stencil, it doesn't really matter, but if you look very carefully, it is higher, more space here, and it's closer here. So I'm gonna do this one because I want it to fit really nicely on that cake. Um, and I'm gonna move you guys around again. Don't mind me, we're just gonna go spinning in circles because I'm right-handed and this way you guys can see everything I'm doing here. Okay, so I'm gonna take my pointy spatula. I'm gonna take a tiny little glob of buttercream. Are you guys excited? I love this so much. And see if I can do this this way. So we are just going to pick a side and start with it. The buttercream will hold the stencil where it is. So I don't have to hold the stencil the whole way. I just have to make sure it doesn't move around. But the buttercream is going to act like glue. Oh, I'm going to have some... Well, we messed that guy up. That's okay. I'll show you guys. We'll do some troubleshooting. So we're just going to work our way backwards now. We're just going to smear. We just want to clean off the area by the stencil. All this extra buttercream. I'm gonna have to do this the other way so I can show you guys. I didn't have enough control over it. Okay, so then we're just gonna pull it straight off. I like these colors. So you can see we have, I don't know how well you guys can see. Mom! Let me turn you guys around. Okay, there we go. You can see we have a little smearing here. This guy's nice. This guy had a little smearing again. When you get to the ends, that's when it gets a little bit more difficult because we're wrapping further around, so we're distorting the stencil as we go around the cake. So, while our cake is still cold, sometimes you have to pop it back in the freezer several times to just get around the cake. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do this real fast while it's still nice and cold, and we're gonna do a second one, and I will show you guys the difference. So. I am just cleaning off the stencils on the table. So we're gonna wanna measure. I can only put two more. 
So I'm going to decide how far I want to space them. I'm going to do it just like that. I'm going to come around here. Next one. And then we can also do it this way where we take the card and I'm going to smooth it over this way. So either way is totally acceptable. Smoothing it with the card or smoothing it with the pointing. And I'm just going to pull it straight off. Ooh, I can feel it sticking. So if you look at it, it's starting to pick up some of the green. So the buttercream is getting too soft. So this is when I would have to pop it in the freezer. So this first guy, let me move you guys around again. Sorry for all the movement. Okay, the lining is better over this direction. I'm gonna show you guys the difference between a cold cake and then just the difference between that first round and the second round. So you can see we have nice clean lines. I have a couple smudges but we have nice clean lines here. And the green is beautiful, right? The green is not messed up. We go around here and you can see how the green is messed up here. There's little spots where the stencil stuck to that green because it wasn't cold enough. So that is the challenge of decorating with a stencil and with a frozen cake is time. You gotta work really fast um, so what you would do for a, a real cake here is you do the first stencil, you put it back in the freezer for five minutes, pull it back out, do the second stencil, put it back in the freezer for five minutes, and just make sure it stays as cold as possible. The other thing that I recommend with really long stencils like this, because it distorts as it wraps around the cake, is to use a square cake or a hexagon cake where you have flat surface and you're holding it onto a flat surface so it doesn't distort the stencil. It depends on the type of stencil, how much that will make a difference in your design. Um, but it's definitely a lot more difficult to do it on a round cake than to do it on a flat square or a hexagon. So um, that's it guys, we did, um, we got our stencils and our stripes here. What questions do you guys have for me? That's precarious. Let's see. So that's the questions here. Terry's nervous. I love it. <laughs> Terry says she needs a bigger freezer for this. So um, what I would do when I was doing cakes at home is, you know, we would uh, make sure that the week that I had a stencil cake, we ate all the frozen pizzas and whatever else we had in there um, and cleared them out so that I had the space. So if you have any questions, now is the time. I will stick on here for a couple of minutes um, and gladly answer any questions that you guys have about decorating, about cakes, um, about these guys. And then um, otherwise, we're playing a few other lives we're super excited about. Um, I'm not ready to say anything just yet. Can I do a leaf on top? Yes, totally. Um, let me pop this in the freezer for a quick minute and then we'll do that. Um, but you can catch us on here every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Tutorial Tuesdays. That guy will be in the freezer for a couple minutes while we answer some questions. Um, and then we'll go ahead and do the, the leaf stencil on that guy. So we'll need to clean this guy. Very cool. I love it, guys. Rachel, I would love to talk about homemade versus store-bought. Um, so do you mean cakes in general or ingredients, icing? Um, that's a very big topic. There's a lot of um, differences between store-bought product, even um, the difference between 
you know, buying a tomato at the grocery store and buying one at the farmer's market, that same thing applies to your ingredients um, that you're getting for cakes. If you're getting a cake at a grocery store, um, they, it may be totally delicious and they may be incredibly talented, um, but most grocery stores you're gonna have a frozen cake. So it's gonna be a little bit drier. Um, they're gonna be restricted by what they're allowed to do, about what time they're allowed to put into their cakes, um, things like that. So there's a big range in what you can find from a custom shop um, or from a grocery store. And then when you're doing something at home, like you have complete control over every aspect of that. Um, so that's pretty unique. Let's see what other questions you guys have. Homemade fondant versus pre-made. Pre Beautiful. Um, we make our own fondant here. We just happen to have a recipe that is amazing. Um, it's a white chocolate based fondant. Um, I totally lost my train of thought. It's gone. Oh, fondant. Um, there are a lot of pre-made fondants that are excellent. So if you want to save your time, if you're not doing fondant a ton, then it would be worth the money to just buy the pre-made fondant. Um, instead of spending time making the fondant all the time. Um, the, what is the brand, Choco Pan? I think it's Dream Fondant now, um, is the most similar to what we use. Um, it's very forgiving, it's very soft and stretchy, um, but it holds its shape well, so it doesn't tear very easily. It's very nice to work with. You can cover cakes with it, or you can um, make figurines with it. Um, Wilton brand fondant I have never used. Um, how do you pick the spots on the bottom of the cake? Yes, excellent question. So, we've got some spots here on this bottom stripe. Um, that is because when I was scraping it down, um, I took too much of the green off and went back down into the white. So I would just put a little bit more green on there and then pop in the freezer for a few minutes and it would be perfect. So you can always fiddle with those guys. Um, if you put a border on your cake, you'll probably cover that last strip up so it doesn't really matter. It just depends what you're doing with it. Um, Melinda, how long before decorating can you make your earth frosting? Excellent question. It depends entirely on the type of frosting that you're making. Um, if you are making an American buttercream like we do, you can make it up to a week in advance. It can sit out just covered um, and it'll be perfectly fine. Um, if you're making a crusting buttercream, then you're going to want to do it almost immediately beforehand um, or cover it really well so that it doesn't start to develop that crust on it. Um, if you're doing um, like a whipped type icing, then you're going to want to do it immediately beforehand as well. So really the American buttercream like that we use here is incredibly forgiving. Um, it gives you lots of time and um, lots of opportunities to play with it and mess with it. So let me grab that cake and we'll do that last stencil real quick. You guys can keep asking questions and I'll catch up on them. flash in the freezer and this guy is ready so we are gonna do this guy and let's do it might be too hard to see let's do the limey green and we'll just do the other side of the stencil As can see. So just a tiny bit. Let's do this here and I'm just going to hold that stencil still. Not have been cold enough. All right, so we're just gonna pull it straight off. Oh yeah, I can feel it sticking. Oh, I love this stencil so much. It's so pretty. 
Okay, so you can see where I held it. My finger warmed it up, and so it's stuck there and there. But this stencil is beautiful. I love covering a cake in this stencil. In fact, I can take you guys up front real quick and show you um, some of our display cakes. We have two different display cakes with this stencil on them, and they look totally different because of the colors and the overall designs on the cake. So it's very cool to just play and see something different. So let's go on a real quick field trip up front real quick, and I'll show you guys those. Make sure I don't have any questions. What is the recipe of um, Doris of crusting buttercream? I don't have a recipe for that because I don't like to use it. Um, let's see if I can get my comments to pop up in here. I don't know why it's not showing me comments. Okay, so I can't see comments for a minute. But I'm gonna show you guys our showroom real quick and show you a couple of display cakes that have that stencil that I absolutely love on them. Um, this guy we did for a photo shoot for a wedding at Connor Prairie. Um, and this guy up top is this yellow, um, like ochre color with a white cream. And I just absolutely love it. I think it's so cool, so different like fall but funky gold i love it i love this cake let's see and then this one is for another photo shoot we did for a we like to do styled shoots um, with photographers and venues coordinators um this is one of my favorite ones we designed this cake a while ago um and i kept trying to get brides to get this cake for their wedding. But all I had was a sketch, and guys, I'm not very good at drawing, so the sketch didn't really do it justice. But I had this idea in my head with these like, you know, I just pieced together things I found on Pinterest, so I didn't create anything new. But um, it was very cool to finally get to see it come to life. Courtney did an amazing job bringing it to life, and then we got to do a photo shoot with it, and so now brides are like drooling over it. But this is doing it in a very dark color or a darker color and then a lighter shade of the same color and I just love love that difference so there's a lot of very cool ways to do this stencils and stripes like this are so fun um, there's a lot of options and then like I said those ester those ester combs are absolutely amazing so very cool so I'm gonna check real quick and see what questions I have and then um, we will be done for tonight. Thank you guys so much for joining us again. Um, this is Megan Ritz with Classic Cakes. We are in Carmel, Indiana. Please jump on our website, classiccakescarmel.com. Take a look at what we're doing. Leave a comment. Tell me where you're from. Um, I love it. Thank you so much. Throw me lots of hearts. Lots of comments here. Let's see. Um, black and gold Purdue cake. Yes. Terry. It's a little bit Purdue-y, but not really. It's an ochre. How do you add dark color to buttercream? Um, Jen, I did an awesome, well, it was fun for me, um, tutorial Tuesday on colors and color mixing. So jump on our YouTube page and um, or here on Facebook and take a look at that one. And then please comment any questions and I will jump on and answer those as well. Michael, we do not freeze our cakes to store them, only for um decorating so like for stacking cakes or for doing stencils things like that our cakes do not stay in there oh my gosh i love all these hearts you guys are making me feel so good okay awesome thank you guys so much if you have any questions please comment um and we will definitely be around to answer those thank you so much this is megan ritz with classic cakes and you've joined us for another tutorial tuesday